If you're trying to learn calligraphy on your own and you don't know these three things, listen up. I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter and over the years of teaching thousands of students in person and online how to do calligraphy, I've narrowed it down to three main things that you need to know right off the hop in order to learn calligraphy quickly and not frustrate yourself. Let's get into them. First, you need to know what supplies to use. To keep things simple, you need a writing tool. For most people, that's gonna be a brush pen that is flexible, meaning it can give you thinner lines if you press lightly and thicker lines if you press hard. Like I mentioned, for most people who wanna learn modern calligraphy, and if you've landed on this page, I'm assuming that's the case, this would be a brush pen, so like this, or like this, or like this, or this, or this, or this. There are so many kinds of brush pens that I won't get into in this video, but if you want my recommendations and links, I have a full supplies guide that you can find at thehappyevercrafter.com slash supplies. I'll still link to that below. But the long story short is that finding a pen is just to make sure it's flexible. Okay. What happens a lot is people go to the store and look for a calligraphy pen, which lands them in an aisle looking at pens that look like this with a chisel tip. This is for calligraphy, but not the kind that we want to do, the whimsical and flowy script you're seeing all over social media and you want to try, which is often referred to as modern calligraphy. So no chisel tips, no calligraphy pens. And the last thing I'll say about a flexible tool is that you could also do calligraphy using a pointed pen instead of a brush pen. That's what this is. These both have a nib that you dip in ink. So if you're choosing to go this route, it's the same rule. Your nib has to be flexible. So the nib is pointed on the end and when you push on it, those tines spread apart and they give you more or less ink. So what you don't want similar to brush pens are chisel tip nibs. They are not flexible. Okay, so that's your writing tool. It has to be flexible. Next, you need paper. For paper, I suggest one of two things, either using Rhodia paper or a similar brand with nice smooth paper with guidelines on it, like these grid lines, or use marker paper if you're learning from a calligraphy workbook. That way you can put it over top of your workbook and trace it through. Because this paper, if I take a sheet and put it over top of a workbook, it's nice and see-through, so you can still see the guidelines of what you need to trace, and it's really nice and easy on your pens. The long story short on paper is that you want the smoothest, highest quality paper as possible, so it doesn't damage your writing tools. And you wanna always make sure that you have guidelines, whether that's built in on the paper or see-through paper, so you can see guidelines you put underneath. Again, for an actual brand recommendation and links to everything, my full 50-page supplies guide is linked below, and all of this is in there. And that is literally it for supplies. A writing tool, a paper, good to go. Okay, second thing you need to know is what the basic strokes are. This is like my bread and butter, what I love to teach because so many people miss it at the start, myself included when I got started, and you literally cannot do calligraphy without knowing this. I mean, you could, but it won't go well. I go into so much more detail on this in my free course and I'll link to that below too, but in a nutshell, here it is. So these are the basic strokes. They just look like little squiggles. We have an upstroke, a downstroke, an overturn, an underturn, a compound curve, an oval, an ascending loop, and a descending loop. You don't need to remember all of those names right now, don't worry. So first, you learn how to do these really, really well. And then they turn into letters. So let me demonstrate that. Let's say I took this upstroke, and then I take this oval, and then I take this underturn, and I stick them together, boom, I have the letter A. And that's how you make letters in calligraphy. It has absolutely nothing to do with your handwriting or finding someone else's calligraphy style and just copying it until you think you can do it solo. You could do that, but good luck. Now, like I said, there is a bit more to it than that and not all the letters are quite as simple, but the important thing is that you learn these basic strokes, or as I like to call them, drills, inside and out before you ever start writing letters or else you're going to frustrate yourself. So that's thing number two, know the basic strokes. Okay, and the last thing you need to know is what and how to practice. I know this sounds so duh, but hear me out. 
I'm not saying there's any one way specifically that you should practice. Practice is practice, but I see a lot of beginners kind of waffle on where to start and then where to go to next in terms of how to learn more and more and build on their skills. So here's the order I tell people, and this is actually the order in which I also built my calligraphy courses and my workbooks in order to move from one to the next in a useful order. So first you learn the basic strokes, you know this now. Um, you learn all of those basic squiggles that I just showed you and you practice them over and over again. Then you learn the minuscule letters or the lowercase letters in their most basic form. Nothing fancy, just how to build each letter. You just learn each letter like the back of your hand. Then you learn how to do majuscule or uppercase letters. These are definitely harder than lowercase letters, but once you know those, you'll have the muscle memory and the understanding to do these harder ones. Then you learn how to connect your letters into words. So once you get to that point, you're in a whole new world being able to actually write stuff. But as you start, you're gonna come across some really tricky letter connections and you're gonna have to really practice tons and tons of new ways to connect letters to each other. Then at this point, you're probably starting to feel really comfy with your calligraphy and your basic letters. And you're like, okay, I want it to feel more stylized, more me. So that's when you learn how to do bouncing and stylizing. You know the basics like the back of your hand and now you can start to break the rules a little bit, tastefully, within reason. And as you do that, you develop a little more of your personal style. That's the fun part about modern calligraphy. You can do totally whatever you want with it. It's just that if you did that too soon without all the background info, it would turn out messy and frustrating. So that's when you get to start really stylizing things. And the last step I recommend is learning flourishing. This is kind of like a bonus add-on if it's something you like. You've already found your style and now you can start adding flourishes like extra embellishments, swooshes, swirls to really amp things up. And then you just keep practicing and creating and writing and experimenting. You've got all the tools in your toolkit. Now you just use them. My best advice, honestly, for practice is just find a resource or an instructor that you like and that you find breaks it down nicely for you and then just stick with it. Obviously, I would love to be that teacher for you and to convince you to start with my free crash course. But even if not, there are so many amazing people teaching calligraphy. So start exploring and start watching content to find one that you like and then just start. Okay, so that's it, the three steps. Number one, get the right tools. Reminder that all down below, I'll link to my 50 page supplies guide. Number two, learn the basic strokes first and really understand them. And then number three, practice in a meaningful order. So I hope this was helpful. I mentioned it a few times throughout, but if you're looking for a super quick and easy way to get started with all of this, with all the info in one spot, you're so welcome to take my free 90 minute crash course. It truly walks you through everything all in one spot, no fluff. You can find that at showmeyourdrills.com. And I hope to see you in there. Good luck with learning and prepare to be obsessed.